Hello, Vinesh Mystery and Saha Faruqi. We're here today to talk about pupillage application, specifically the written part of the stage. Uh, this is in reference to my post from the 18th of December last year and in respect of Sahar's post from last week inviting aspiring barristers to provide their questions uh, for us to consider today. So as already suggested, today we are going to be considering the written part of the process and we're going to be addressing some of the key questions that you have supplied on LinkedIn as well as some general uh, tips and advice that we've picked up from our uh, time of applying. Thank you. Well, uh, hi guys. First off, uh, congratulations on pupillage at DWF Advocacy Finish. Um, I know you've been through this process before and a number of you are now about to go through this process. Uh, and that's really what we want to try and help you with. At the outset, what I want to say though is that this vlog is not um, the answer for everything. This is a combination of my experience uh, as an applicant and my experience uh, as somebody who now sits on a pupillage committee. So it's what I would recommend, uh, it's what I uh, myself would do, um, and it's what I did actually. Uh, but it's not necessarily something that every set of chambers will endorse, it's not something that every panel will like to see. You've got to use your discretion uh, and ultimately take my advice or leave it. Before we come on though to the specific questions that uh, you guys have asked, and Vinesh is going to take me through those and uh, maybe challenge me a bit on them. Uh, I just want to maybe address a couple of uh, key points that maybe um, will come up throughout the questions themselves, uh, but also uh, they are, to my mind, some of the most important things. And regardless of whether or not you like uh, or enjoy uh, or utilize the specifics of what I come to suggest during the course of uh, my answers, these are things that I think will definitely help. The first is bullet points. That's my number one tip. Uh, I've given that to you before. Yep. Um, where it's appropriate, for example, on the why do you want to be a barrister question, use bullet points. And we'll develop that when we come to that question. But the use of bullet points is so important because part of this job is your ability to be concise and bullet points uh, are being concise. Put yourself in the shoes of a person who's marking these applications, who's marking hundreds of them. They will be grateful if rather than trying to fill out the 200 uh, word limit with every single thing you can think of, you just said, bang, 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 here it is, done. So bullet points. The second one is obvious, but the number of people that don't do it is astounding. It's spelling and grammar. You cannot be good at this job uh, if you can't write uh, coherent English. Uh, you have to do that. It's your bread and butter. So checking your spelling and checking your grammar, absolutely essential. If you don't do that, your application uh, will start on a very steep downward spiral before it's got going. Spelling and grammar. Uh, checking, which um, is obviously um, linked to that. The other thing I'd say about checking is a number of people ask me all the time um, whether I can check their applications. Please um, don't ask me in the time that you've got now before the deadline to check all of your applications. But when it comes to checking, what I would say is too many cooks spoil the broth. So choose two, maximum three people to check through your applications and send it to them in ascending order of experience. So hypothetically start with a peer, um, somebody who's just done the bar course with you for example. Uh, once they've had a look at it, and I understand there's physical things around that, sometimes you know, people are secretive about this stuff, I'm just using a peer as an example, or even just a mate who's done a different degree altogether. Ask them to look at it, then uh, send it um, to possibly a pupil barrister um, or a junior barrister. Uh, and then um, finally, after you've been through two sets of revisions, um, send it to the most senior person you know, ideally someone who sits on a pupillage committee and ask them to look at it. Don't send it all uh, to, to all of them at the same time, so you get three sets of potentially conflicting responses and you think, God, what do I do now? 
the best way to approach it um, is to, to do it in that sort of um, ascending approach. And that also means and forces you to get your answers down early or early-ish so that you can take it through that process. So bullet points, spelling and grammar, checking. Fourth thing, avoid cliches. Yeah. Relentless cliches um, about, um, I'm desperate to be a barrister because um, I believe passionately in justice. That may well be true, but I can tell you that as a practitioner, that comes across as a cliche and it will appear over and over and over again across the applications you read. And frankly, it's boring. Like I say, it may or may not be true, but just avoid it, at least for the application stage. In interview, we'll talk about cliches when we, when we get there, but um, yeah, avoid cliches. I'd also say avoid um, connecting your aspirations to TV shows like Suits and um, Run Hole of the Bailey and that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's an increasing inclination to do that and uh, practitioners um, either don't know it because by and large they hate watching legal dramas because you just want to stand up and shout at the screen because you're like, that's not what happens in real life. Um, I think, yeah, definitely. So that's obviously a good, a good example of um, a cliche. Uh, and finally, be specific. So some of the questions, um, and this is a good example of where you differentiate from one where bullet points are appropriate, is being specific. The question itself will ask you, for example, why this chambers or why this area of law? Now, you can't approach that um, if you want to stand out and you want to be successful. You cannot approach that with just generic sort of answers. Well, you know, um, I did a bit of family law um, on the bar course or um, I um, did a mini pupillage in intellectual property. You've got to try and hone in on a specific member of chambers, for example, or a specific case that um, the, the law firm has been involved in and talk about some of the things around that, some of the issues, tease it out um, and explain why that case interests you, why that practice area interests you, why that chambers resonates with you. Um, and on that, on that subject, within the headline of Be Specific, make sure that when you're deciding who to apply to, that you look at the junior tenants or the junior members of um, the business. So for example, at DWF Advocacy Limited, you look at the junior barristers Look at them, look at their profiles and consider whether academically you match up to them. So did you go to the same sort of universities? Did you get the same sort of grades? Uh, and then consider some of the experience that they've built up before uh, pupillage. Uh, and again, think, have I done stuff like that? Um, what sort of feel do you get from the business that you're applying to? And is it something that you can look at and think, yeah, I can fit in with these people. I can imagine, um, you know, being mates with these people. Um, and I can imagine that um, intellectually I fit in here. This is the right source of place for me. So bullet points, spelling and grammar, checking, avoid cliches, be specific. Those are the things that I would say at the outset and that um, you should try and apply uh, to your application full stop. All right, so shall we have a look at some of the some of the questions?